again and welcome aboard. This is Chris Jones inviting you to join me on a cruise around the beautiful Norfolk Rivers and Broads. Stay with me for the next 25 minutes and together we'll meet some of the river people. This week I'm heading up the River Bure towards Wroxham to meet Peter Bauer and Barney Matthews on board the Wherry Yacht Olive. Wherries and Wherry Yachts are the biggest sailing boats you are now likely to see on the broads. They are the majestic, graceful old ladies that turn people's heads wherever they go. A reflection of the days when wherries in their dozens plied the Norfolk rivers. And I must say I'm looking forward to this day's work with some pleasure. Now Barney Matthews is at the tiller and Peter Bauer is now hand cranking this massive sail up Olive's 60 foot mast. Now Peter, it wasn't until recently that I discovered that these wherry yachts were chartered out to holiday makers. Yes, and in fact they're doing what they've always done because they were both built as hire boats. Yes. They were chartered out with a skipper and a steward by Ernest Collins from the, well, from 1909 onwards. And uh, we're just continuing that tradition. Yes, and uh, very popular indeed. Actually, yes, actually. yes, we're uh, virtually fully booked for weekends. Oh, yeah. um, yes, yes. Now we've seen there the, 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 the uh, ease in which that mast was raised. And when I first looked at it this morning, I thought, my goodness me, we're going to have a real job on there. You know? but yes, because I had the mast down because I've just been doing some work. Yes. In fact, the raising and lowering the mast is one of the easiest jobs on the boat. Yes. Uh, a lot easier than putting the sail up, as you heard from my groaning and yes. panting just then. Now that is some sail, isn't it? Now how many square feet of sail have you got there? Just over a thousand. It's, uh, we've got the bonnet on today, it's a light wind. The bonnet mm. is an extra four feet you lace onto the bottom of the oh, sail. I see, yes. And with that on, she really is at the absolute maximum. Yeah, yeah. It's a high peak sail as well, it's probably about another 10 or 15 feet above the top of the mast. Yes. Um, so you're talking about 65, 70 feet yes. up in the air, the top of it. And uh, it's it's the maximum sail area she can take. You can feel just now a little breath of wind and she's healing she's over healing a bit. Over, yeah. If the wind gets up at all, then you have to take the bonnet off. Uh -huh. because, how, how far over will she heal? Does she, can she motor along or race along a bit? She can shift um, mm. as far as healing over is concerned, it's, it's more a matter of how strong you are holding the tiller. I see. Yeah. Because uh, the pressure on the helm is, is what tells you whether you've got too much sail area or yeah. not. Yeah. When two people can't hold the tiller then you know it's time to do something. Quite. Now how long is she? She's... Uh, 56 feet. 56 feet? Yes. And what sort of tonnage are we talking about now? About, roughly about 20. There's all different yes. ways of estimating tonnage but about 20 tons. And completely wood? I mean, there's, yes, there's, oh there's, yes. There's no concession to the modern engineering here? No, no. No, even the deck covering is traditional lino. Let's talk about the, the difference between then a, a, a wherry yacht and a wherry. Well, the wherries were the trading vessels, basically, that carried cargoes on the broads from, well, the, with the keels before them, from the sort of 15, 1600s onwards, probably. Um, <coughs> As you're attracting a lot of attention yes, from yes, there goes a broad tours cruiser now. Tours, going past. The cameras reaction. are out, yes. <laughs> uh, as the broads got popular in the mid sort of 1850s onwards, people wanted a large boat on which to have a holiday. Yes. Um, there were some private yachts about them, but not much else and uh, they started fitting out wherries. They cleaned out the hold, put a few berths in, um, possibly put some partitions up, some windows around the edge, and in summer some of the enterprising wherry owners would use their boat for holidays, and yes. then come winter time they'd strip it all out again and go back to trading. Because the, uh, the season then was only sort of June to September at the most. Quite, yes. Um, none of you nearly all the year round as we see today. Yes. And then as time went by, um, people demanded higher standards, so in many cases the boats were permanently fitted out and, you know, wash basins and so on put in. And many purpose-built boats were built, and they were all pleasure wherries with the traditional wherry hull and with cabins instead of the hold. Um, 
Now you saw the how tour, which we're in the process of restoring yes. back at our yes. base. And when we get on rocks and broads, you'll see the solace, which is the only other surviving pleasure wherry, which is privately owned and maintained in beautiful condition. So how many passengers can you accommodate on Olive then? On Olive we can take up to 12, which is mm -hmm. the maximum we're allowed. It's not a bad number really. No, no, it's a fair sized party. Olive of course is different because yes. she is a wherry yacht. Yes. Uh, yes. The difference there was that some people didn't really like the idea of having a holiday on a boat that has its origins as a working boat. Um, a bit like saying you were going for a holiday on a coal barge, you know, or something like that. <laughs> and uh, so yeah. the, some of the Broadland boat builders had the idea of combining the size and the simple rig of a wherry mm. with that of a yacht. And so the wherry yacht was born. Um, a white hull instead of a black hull, usually carvel built instead of clinker. And most of the yachts at that time had counter sterns, graceful yes stern sloping up to sloping away to nothing which are set behind the tiller and now we're sitting here on the counter stern watching Barney hard at work and we're not in the way at all. Quite, yes. Now yes. on a trading wherry or a pleasure wherry you just can't do that. Mm. The only sort of spare space is on the foredeck and even then you get in the way when the sail's being raised or when you're going through a bridge. So the wherry yachts had the additional advantage of this extra deck space where you are well and truly out of the way. Well of course the season must come to an end inevitably and of course that means not the end of the season for you because there's such a lot of maintenance to do on these yeah, I would imagine. That's just a start. In fact now we're operating two vessels and hopefully from next year three mm -hmm. um, we do keep one in commission all year round yeah, um, yeah. and last year Barney on the Lady Edith had lets in January, February and oh, March right. yes. and this year we're both booked uh, for weekends in December so uh, there isn't that much uh, time for maintenance, not as much as we'd like, but yes, we do lay the vessels up, um, probably one year and three it would be from now on, um, and that's really when the, the really hard work starts. And when you're talking about hard work, I mean, what, what, what does that entail? Hauling her out, we've got our own slipway, um, hauling her out, scrubbing her down, that's the easy part, and then you have to start looking for what's got to be done. Um, nearly always there's some planking to do, yeah. but these are old boats now. Um, Jack Powell's, one of the famous Broadland boat builders, told my father some years ago that he reckoned oak timbers had a life of about 75 years. Yes. Well, this boat is now 78 years old, and I reckon he's right. Because, uh, <laughs> within the next, well, I've already replaced half of the timbers, and I would think within the next five or ten years we'll have had to done the rest yeah. and it will be the same with the other boats as well. Barney Matthews, you've uh, been <coughs> kindly sailing Olive for us while I've been talking to Peter. I mean, how does she handle? Compared with my vessel, this is... And your vessel is Lady Edith? Yeah. She's different. She goes better in light airs, goes better to winded. Close hauled, that is. Yes. Uh, my boat runs like a hare. Yeah. That's because, hey, my boom is, I've got a boom on the foot of my sail, this one is loose footed. I prefer my vessel, for, oh, I'm, you know, I'm slightly prejudiced because I've had it for 23 years and I, I'm used to her. Quite. I now is it Lady Edith is, uh, I would just have a quick look at her, she's narrower than... Uh, she's, the yes, she's one and a half foot less in the beam, mm -hmm. that's the width, and uh, she's three foot shorter. My vessel is a little bit heavier on the helm. In light airs, this is heavy enough in, in, Quite, in a yes, blow. Yes. I can, uh, I've sailed this vessel in a blow. And of course, there's enough wind today, I tell you now, we've got the bonnet on, as you see. Yes. There's, there's enough wind, there's, there's, you know, there's enough sail for the amount of wind there is. Well, we've just come on to rocks and broad, and she's now catching the wind and... Yeah, wind's felt south, 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 west. And there's a long beat down to the river side of the broad and the short tack across the other way. When we get down the bottom here we'll probably have another direction of wind. The trees influence the wind here yes. tremendously. When you look up there at the throat, you see the throat, that's that part near the gap yes. yours. 
that sort of when yoke. When it flops up, when it rucks up there, that means you're too close to the wind. I see. There's enough wind here for this bonnet. Now sailing go, let's, let's talk about sailing go just a little bit longer because uh, just a week or two back I was fortunate enough to take part in the Three Rivers race on a traditional broad cruiser. Oh yes. Now then, what struck me about that was that there's lots of sheets and backstays and all sorts of things to keep an eye on, yet for the size of this boat, there doesn't, it seems to be a lot more simple to, to, uh, to operate. Oh yes, hell of a lot more simple. All you have is a main halyard. Yes. That, whereas on the orthodox gaff rig sail, on a yacht one has a main halyard and a peak halyard. Yes. And on a bigger gaff rig yacht you have a main halyard, main halyard purchase, peak halyard and a peak halyard. Also a jib halyard, jib halyard purchase. That's five. Yes. Yeah. Halyards and purchases. This one just got the one halyard, as I say. One halyard, one full stay, and the main sheet. Which is all you need, really, for well, a boat of this size. You, don't, you can't have anything too elaborate yeah. on a big, biggish. Uh, with this type of sail. Quite. And would this. Uh, after all, it was designed for shooting bridges, I suppose. Quite. Primary yes, trading yeah. vessels, initially, who didn't want to be messing about too much. So I was going to say this would be as simple as possible. The, the a similar to rig to a working vessel. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's nothing different. The only difference being we haven't got the, the trading where he loaded, mm. say forty tons of forty tons of beet on board or forty tons of something. You would have been a <laughs> with all that weight getting it moving through the water. Yeah. You'd be in a different ballpark as they say in the That's States. right, yes. Now we're on a short tag now, going back towards the clubhouse. Do you get a sort of personal attachment to these yachts? Oh, I think so. Yeah, one's uh, just like a second wife, I suppose. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like a first wife, I mean. Because when, when one sees them cruising up and down the rivers, I think of them as the dowager duchesses of the of the broads. You know, there's the elegance That's right. and authority with them, isn't there? Yeah, they still have a, a shapely leg. <laughs> they do, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> and a shapely uh, <laughs> sort of rear end. That's right, yes. Yeah. Barney, we've come down below decks. Now, where are we sitting now? This is the saloon. Complete with piano. Oh, crikey! Yes, it uh, is, isn't it? Yes. And the classical yacht piano, five octave. <laughs> oh. Library of books. Yes. Sky, a skylight, which you got covered over at the moment with a with a with a, a proper cover, you know, because we've had so much rain. Yes. But you see, it's lighter in here when the skylight is uncovered and uh, one can they'll, they'll open. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Double bunk. These convert the backrests come out and hang up. Oh, I see. Head. Yes. And the bunks are then double berths. Um, draw space underneath the bunks. Fitted carpets. <laughs> it's sumptuous, as the way I describe it. it the, the whole atmosphere down here is warmth, isn't it? Really. Oh yes. Yes. I mean, even if it. it, it I mean, one could live on a vessel like oh. this. Gracious yeah. me, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, enjoy, especially summertime. Does that piano comfy. work? Oh, yeah. Do, it? yeah. do you play? I play a little bit, yeah. I mean, I'm not, 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 not a great deal. Oh, I see. That's, that's I'll hold the mic. Right. some quite uh, nice. some entertaining evenings down here couldn't yeah, you yeah. I mean that really is nice that yeah, these enjoy that yeah, yeah. well yeah I, I'm no I'm no penis by any means not a bum note <laughs> <laughs> now the, these uh, these these books here Barney I mean they're maritime books yeah they're dealing with the yachts but as you see they're a cracking collection 
Pacific navigation yeah, or navigators. Famous yachts, pirates, the Armada, Atlantic crossings, explorers, the East Indiamen, the clipper ships, the racing yachts. Oh, the beautiful pictures on the front. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness me, yeah, those are, are beautiful. I just edition. Let's just have a look. Oh, gorgeous maps. Oh, beautiful photographs. New Edens in the South Seas. The only thing we haven't got is a TV set. Well, who wants a TV set? We have a radio. Yes. Well, that's a classic remark from a radio man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I come on the broad to get away from TV and the telephone. And I can tell you that the cabin accommodation is very snug indeed. And it's nice to find a loo on board a boat in which you can read the EDP in comfort. Well, I'm sitting up here on the counter stern enjoying the sail back to the moorings and there Peter Bauer is going to tell us about the restoration of the Wherry Hartor. She was built in 1905 for the Coleman family, for the two Mrs. Colemans in fact, and uh, because their younger brother had died whilst out in Egypt a few years earlier on a boat on the Nile called the Daha Bahator, they decided to have their new wherry named after that vessel and called it the Hator. And in fact, she's very much on an Egyptian theme. She's uh, a lot of the interior is full of weird and wonderful hieroglyphics, which were is it? Yeah. gleaned from ideas in the British Museum and so on, all basically on this Egyptian theme. Yes, and of course, she, she, as I've mentioned before, she's still very much under renovation. How long a job is this? I mean, it looks, it looks quite considerable. Uh, well, not as terrible as it mm, might mm. seem. We're um, just about to cover the coach roof and the decks with uh, traditional brown liner. Uh, and then a little bit more work and in fact she'll be ready to sail. So the, the superstructure that we can see at the moment, I mean, is, is this all original stuff? or? Yes, yes. There's, uh, the, the roof has been given additional covering at some mm. stage, but most of the deck is original. You can see where there's been some bits let in for repair, but yeah. uh, it's mainly the original oak, oak deck in one piece, as you see on a, on a wherry. It is too, isn't it? Yeah. So some hefty trees been felled for that, I should it imagine. It must have been a fairly hefty piece of wood. Yes, yeah, yeah. Two inch thick, and uh, almost, I believe, it might be a join halfway along, I'm, mm. I can't remember offhand. But yeah. uh, the wherry deck was made out of a single plank or single planks yeah. rather than uh, the separate laid decks as on our boats. And she's what, how long now? She's 56 foot long. Is she? Yeah. Um, but of course, because she hasn't got the counter stern and because she's a little wider than the olive we've just been on, in fact, she's she's got a lot more space inside. Yeah. She's well, a, she is very much a bigger boat. Yeah. Well, let's pop down below decks and uh, and see what she's like. As you said, there is definitely an Egyptian theme down here. This panelling, as you said, was original. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, she was very unusual in that she was, the interior at any rate, was designed by an architect um, because one of the sisters to the sisters that, that this boat was built for mm. Uh, was married to Edward Boardman, the famous Norwich architect. Oh, yes. And in fact, he, or his firm at least, designed the interior uh, based on this Egyptian theme. Was that the same Boardman that uh, designed Howe Hill? That's correct, oh, yes. Nice. In fact, Hartor used to be moored at Howe Hill quite a lot. I see, yes. Um, so, in fact, Daniel Hall, the Daniel Hall of Reedham, the yard that built her, simply built the wherry outside the hull and everything inside they just sealinged her out sealing on a worry is the floor mm -hmm. uh, and then she was handed over to various firms from Norwich who came and fitted her out mm. uh, quite good in some ways not in others because these firms weren't boat builders and some of the materials that were used and the way some of the bulkheads and so on were fitted uh, weren't designed for things like uh, moisture and woodworm. And I so see, on. yes, yes. In yes. fact, she's built out of sycamore inside, which is mm. not a particularly suitable wood. Yeah. So does that mean mm. you've got to make take any extra special care now in your preparation to make sure she does weather? It means that, in fact, we are having to call in expert help 
in yeah. having this panelling restored and I repaired yeah, yeah. Uh, because it has been attacked by woodworm mm. and at the bottom of some of the bulkheads you can see signs of rot as well oh, yes. where the damp yeah. has got yeah. in from yeah. underneath mm. Mm. and uh, tackling this sort of thing where it's, it's very much a work of art as, <laughs> Quite. as well as just a sort of basic woodwork um, we feel we need help with this. What, what motivates you to, to do this kind of work? Because, I mean, it's, it's a tremendous job. Did you enjoy your sale just now? I did, very much so, yes. That's your answer. Is it? <laughs> it's pure enjoyment out of sailing yeah, these yeah, vessels. Yeah. Uh, it's very nice, too, to be able to share that enjoyment with other people. Yeah. We'll soon have Hartor in commission. We've seen Solis, and there's Albion. So we're getting quite a collection of wherries on the broads nowadays. I mean, is it going to end there, or are there more? No, there are two more in the pipeline, so to speak. Uh, at the moment, they're four capable of sailing: mm. the Albion, the Solis, and our two. Hopefully, Hart or extremely soon. Uh, the White Moth, which is uh, another wherry yacht, sister ship to the Olive and the Lady Edith is being restored at Horning mm -hmm. and she should be sailing within a year or two and there is one other trading worry the Maud which is being restored at Upton by an enthusiastic couple that's very much a long-term job she'd mm -hmm. been sunk for 20 years but uh, he is completely rebuilding her very very thoroughly and uh, in another 5, 10, 15 years when he finally finishes she'll be another grand old vessel in excellent condition Quite. and bringing back a little bit of character to the broads again very definitely yes yes it looked at one time as if the only wherry regularly seen sailing would be the Albion but uh, now with the pleasure wherries and wherry yachts it's a very different picture we like to pride ourselves that we've got the biggest fleet of wherries in the world but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> yes. we definitely have the biggest fleet of Norfolk wherries in the That's world right. yeah well Peter and Barney thank you very much for the trip out it's been a great pleasure confess to a little bit of self-indulgence here. Best of luck for the future. Thank you very much. I don't mind telling you that I enjoyed that immensely and it's nice to see these great old ladies making a comeback.